Hello once again, this is Mr. Pete, your old school shop teacher, and this is tips number 840, which is part 6 of my 6 part series on the Atlas gear cutting attachment, and this part is entitled Finishing Touches on the Attachment. So I'm just going to kind of wrap up here, and it's going to be a real short video, but I had to make a few modifications and changes and so on, so let me show those to you and how this will be used and then be sure and watch the follow-up videos which may be out of sequence with this where I actually make some gears if this works on the Atlas Craftsman lathe. Okay this is what I've got so far along with the shaft here. Now if you have not watched the five other videos in this series you're probably going to wonder what the heck is he doing so be sure and go back and watch those if you have not seen them I'll put links in the description for those videos along with the numbers and all of that well right away here I ran into just a few little problems and let me tell you what they are first of all let me say that this is not very universal that is I have no idea what gears I will be cutting in the future or what the diameters of the bores are because they're certainly going to vary but probably the reality is here I never will use this other than in the videos because I am capable of cutting gears on my two milling machines so this is kind of redundant in this shop but uh, it's a fun project but it's a rather long one but one of my future projects is to rebuild this reversing mechanism off of a South Bend lathe because these two gears which are identical are totally worn out or chipped and lost all of their form and need to be replaced so I'm going to make two gears for that and I've already cut some blanks but they're not turned to diameter yet but the problem is this how will I fasten these blanks to the shaft here because there is no uh, keyway as there is in most gears because these gears spin on a shaft so I probably will cut keyways like this in the blanks and then a corresponding keyway in here and you'll see that if you watch the follow-up videos but I'm not going to do that now but it's very important that the gear on this end does not, I'll put the old one on there, does not rotate a little bit as the gear is being cut. So just tightening the nut with the washers and spacers and everything may not be sufficient so I believe it needs to be keyed. Now I've already taken care of the problem on the other end here. If I may take this out I'll show you what I just did off camera a few moments ago. You may remember that this was uh, what 11 sixteenths diameter and I cut a keyway in there. Well I changed my mind. I am no longer, I change my mind all the time. I am no longer, if I can find the gear, going to use this one as my pattern and that is what I made the little step for. It's quite large so I'm not going to use this. I am going to use another gear here matter of fact this this one is a 32 tooth with a keyway in it this same number of teeth as this but they're different pitches but the pitch doesn't matter it's the tooth count that matters when using this so to keep this from spinning on here wrong end Corrigan I don't want this end to spin either, although it's rather unlikely. But what I did off camera, as I was saying, as I digressed, that I turned this down to 5 eighths to fit this. Didn't have to be much, but I lost my keyway, of course. So what I did do is to ream an eighth inch hole. Now it's blind, I know, I'm breaking my own rules, but I took a one inch hardened dowel pin and cut off a piece of the correct length and that will be in there like this get in there now that's loose and it may come out and I would I could Loctite it be and then heat it up to get it out I could grab it with the Bernard's and it'll pull off but I probably don't even need to do that because again 
this has to be a universal type of of deal so you can see that the keyway uh, matches up with that little pin that I just put in there so that problem is solved and again there is a, a couple of uh, other spacers to go on here and then one other thing that I did and I suppose I'll be losing this all the time is that well let me put it back in here so you know what I'm talking about okay this die cast collar needs to be fastened on to the shaft like that but when tightening a set screw against the shaft often you leave a little mark a raised mark you kind of bugger it up and if that happens the shaft will be difficult to slide out of the fixture so what I did while you were sleeping was to mill just a little bit of a flat on there such that the collar can be tightened on to the flat make sense so with that collar in place and this as my pattern like that and it won't turn and then a spacer here and then finally that finished nut will go on there and be tightened up and that will stay on there during the entire gear cutting operation well what's that slot doing there some of you are thinking I didn't see that in the last video well that's because I did a few days ago all right so the reason for that is this is the finished gear but let me put that on there relatively small diameter as you can see so when cutting the gear this cutter may well come up here and hit the fixture now it's aluminum it wouldn't really hurt anything but I'm just making an allowance for that maybe senseless maybe useless maybe unnecessary but it's there and then on this end as shown before that's not it I got so many collars around here and then a nut on here as well and when I actually use this again I will have a key or something to prevent this gear or should I say this gear blank from rotating on me and spoiling the whole darn thing I might have shown this before but here are the three sources for the blueprints that I use these are the drawings for the Atlas gear cutting attachment labeled appropriately well number one is the 1939 Atlas and number two is the 1950s casting specialties and then that nine page set of drawings was I finally determined it was drawn by Joe Hildreth of my heap fame and hopefully I can get him to put all these drawings on my heap some of you have been to that site but I haven't been able to get a hold of him lately but if this is successful that's where you will find those drawings as well as the ones that I have posted at the end of all five videos another thing I did I put some Loctite on the thread here because I really don't see the need for that. I, I would change several things in the design of this if I were to do it over again, but it's done because all of the adjustment can be made right here. We don't really need to adjust anything here. And of course this has to pull up, it's spring loaded. Now the reason I put some red on here is that once I start cutting a gear, I do not want that to rotate 180 degrees. Well why, says you? Well, if in fact this is not symmetrical, the wedge, the that is if it's off center, that would throw the spacing off by a few thousands I suppose, maybe it wouldn't make any difference, but that's why I did that. I should use some of Sophia's nail polish. She has it in 300 colors, you know. Now, I have a full set of these Chinesium gear cutters here. And, the, you know, they're all different sizes. And is it, they are a very dubious quality. But anyway, I already have one mounted. They're 5 8 holes. Very small holes compared to what you usually will see. So I had to make another arbor to hold that so it looks something like, well, actually it actually looks exactly like this. 
So this will be held either in a collet, not a three jaw, and uh, this is long enough to where I can support it with a tailstock center if need be. So that's the general principles of what you see right here. That's my arbor. We'll see if it works. We'll see how much run out there is. But I've never used a gear cutter that didn't seem to lope a little bit. And I never could figure out if that was the cause of the cutters or the arbors. But I'm talking about way back to 1959. I always noticed that with gear cutters. By the way, there's the old arbor that I had. Oh, look, I used one of those pins in that, so I didn't just reinvent it. Anyway, this is the one I will be using. And now I put the fixture into the Atlas uh, milling attachment just to show you what the fit-up looks like. But I don't know why I'm showing you this. I'll just take you over to the Atlas lathe. But I'm not going to cut a gear in this one. I'm just showing you the general principles of the whole blame thing. I sincerely hope that many of you watched my video where I rewired this reversing switch. And uh, thank you again for all the help that people gave to me. It wasn't me that did it. I had a lot of help because it's, that's a little bit beyond my pay grade. But anyway, I now have forward and reverse for the first time since I've owned this lathe, which was 19... 93, 29 years ago. I finally have reversed. And why am I telling you that? Because I more than likely will be needing to run the machine in reverse. And you'll understand later on why that is necessary. So what I have here in the spindle is a milling type holder with a set screw. And that end will go in like that. I won't tighten it up right now, but I am able to run it in reverse. Okay, this is what it looks like set up on the Atlas Craftsman 12-inch lathe. And originally this was designed for the 10-inch lathe. I'll talk more about that later on. But as you can see, I can bring the tail stock, if that showed up, into the center here. And the chuck is not on there, so it's not in the way. And uh, it's, this is essentially the way I'm going to be using it in uh, the upcoming video. So be sure and watch those videos when available. Now let me know in the comments if any of you actually make this thing, which I am dubious about, but doesn't matter. It's just a project that I hope you enjoyed seeing all of the different operations that I perform. Now, the fallacy of this whole project is as follows. We are cutting a gear on the lathe because we do not have a milling machine. However, I use the milling machine over and over again in making the fixture. So, I know that does not make any sense at all, but that's the way it is. I believe this was probably a failure in the marketplace, and that's why they never actually sold it. They only had the blueprints in the Atlas catalog, as shown in earlier videos, because it might not be practical, and it's not going to be rigid enough. Look at all the hangover here. So I may even have to cut the, each tooth in two passes rather than one, but time will tell. Thank you ever so much for watching all of these videos in this six-parter, and I'll see you in the next one. This is Mr. Pete saying so long for now.